Good day. In this lesson, we will use examples of questions on graphs of motion to ensure that we understand these graphs. A boy jogs in an easterly direction at 1,72 meters per second for 600 seconds. Draw the position time, velocity time and acceleration time graphs for his motion. Since the velocity of the boy is constant, let us start with the velocity versus time graph. The velocity time graph is a straight horizontal line at 1,72 meters per second. We use the area under the graph to calculate the total displacement of the boy. To calculate the area under the graph, multiply the time taken, 600 seconds, by the velocity of the boy, 1,72. So, the total displacement of the boy is 1,032 meters. Since we know the total displacement of the boy and that the gradient of the displacement time graph is a straight line, we can draw the displacement time graph. First, we draw our x and y axes and label them appropriately. Now, we plot the total displacement of 1032 meters at 600 seconds. And finally, we join the zero point, since the boy started at zero displacement, to the end point we marked, and we have our displacement versus time graph. The last thing that we were asked to do is draw an acceleration time graph. Since the boy runs at a constant velocity, this graph is a very easy one to draw. So the acceleration versus time graph is a horizontal graph with a zero gradient going through zero. Now let's look at an example which has a combination of both constant velocity and acceleration. John drives his car on a straight level road in a direction due west. This graph shows his velocity as a function of time. Here is the first question. Describe the motion of the vehicle. Go back and look at our graph carefully and analyze what is going on. The first thing to note is what type of graph this is. As we can see from the axes, it's a velocity time graph. We can also see that in this graph we have both positive and negative velocity vectors. Remember that a negative velocity means that it is moving in the opposite direction. Now let us look at the graph again and work our way slowly through the motion of the vehicle. We were told that the car was originally traveling west, so right west next to the velocity axis in the positive direction. We see from the graph that John started at an initial velocity of zero and then his velocity increased to 10 meters per second in 10 seconds. We know that this increase was uniform because we have a straight line graph. In this next section of the graph, the velocity line is horizontal. We see that the car travels at a constant velocity of 10 meters per second for 20 seconds. Now let's look at our next section from C to D. Here we see that the velocity decreases from 10 meters per second to zero in five seconds. There is constant deceleration because it is a straight line. And now let's describe the final motion from D to E. At point D, the velocity is zero. Between D and E, the velocity is negative. This means that the velocity increases in the opposite direction. So the car accelerates from 0 to 10 meters per second in the last 5 seconds in an easterly direction. Now look at part 2 of this question. Calculate the car's displacement at points B, C, D and E. In order to work out displacement from a velocity versus time graph, we use the area under the graph. So let us look at the graph again. The displacement from A to B is calculated from the area of this triangle. The area of a triangle equals half base times height. So in this case, the area equals a half multiplied by 10 by 10. So the displacement at point B is 50 meters. Now let's find the displacement at point C. In this section, the area is a rectangle, so that area equals base times height. 
the base of this rectangle stretches from 10 seconds to 30 seconds, so in total it is 20 seconds. So the area equals 20 times 10, which equals 200 meters. Therefore, the total displacement at C equals the area under the graph from A to B, added to the area from B to C. So the total displacement at C is equal to 50 meters plus 200 meters, which equals 250 meters. Try now to calculate the displacement to D. Let us see if your calculation matches ours. The area under the graph from C to D equals a half multiplied by 5 by 10, which equals 25 meters. The total displacement at D equals the sum of this displacement and the total displacement up to point C. So, the total displacement at D equals 250 meters plus 25 meters, which equals 275 meters. Now finally, we work out the total displacement to E. We again calculate the area between the graph and the x-axis. Again, the area is given by a half base times height. Please note that this time the height is negative. So the area equals a half times 5 times negative 10, which gives us an answer of negative 25 meters. When we think about this, it makes sense. The negative velocity means that the car moves in the opposite direction. Therefore, the total displacement equals 275 plus negative 25, which gives us a total displacement of 250 meters. Now that we have worked out the displacements, let us look at the final part of this question and see how to use this information. Draw the displacement time graph for this motion and indicate the four sections of the graph. Here we have drawn the axes. To make sure that the graph is nice and smooth, always draw the straight line part of the graph first. We have plotted the displacement at B and C. We know that this will be a straight line since the velocity is constant. We now join the dots. Now to draw the displacement versus time graph for the motion from A to B. Let us again look at the velocity versus time graph. The velocity increases from 0 to 10 meters per second in the first 10 seconds. Since the velocity increases, we know that the gradient of the displacement time graph gets steeper as the time goes on. Let us now draw that in. You can see that we have drawn a curve that is getting steeper since the velocity has increased. Since the velocity at B is the same velocity the car travels at from B to C, the gradient of the curved bit at B needs to match the straight line portion of the graph. Go back again to the velocity versus time graph. From C to D, the velocity slows down to zero. This means that the gradient of the displacement time graph gets less steep during the section. We also know that the displacement at 35 seconds is 275 meters. First, we plot the displacement at 35 seconds. The gradient gets less steep and is zero at 35 seconds since at that point the velocity is zero. Also note that gradient at the end of the straight line portion of the graph matches that of the beginning of the curve from C to D. Can you draw the final part of the graph? Let's see if what you drew matches our graph. Since the velocity is negative, we had already decided that the car speeds up in the opposite direction. So not only did the displacement decrease, but you will note that the gradient of the graph gets steeper. So now we have used a velocity versus time graph to calculate displacement and to draw the matching displacement versus time graph. We have done this for both constant velocity and constant acceleration. Grade 10s, you'll find more information about graphs of motion at www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Remember to try some of the questions in the task video too. See you later.